So I grew up in a very small town in South Georgia, and my grandmother was an entrepreneur. And when I was 10, she picked me up in her giant green LTD Ford, um, and we drove to the Merchants and Citizens Bank downtown. There we opened a savings account that she funded with report card money. So I don't know if y'all are familiar with report card money, but it's better known today as pay for performance. You know, when you do well, you get cash. Well, I was a good student, and when I did well in school, she delivered a crisp $20 bill. Oddly enough, that amount never changed. Through middle school and high school, it was never affected by inflation. <laughs> but guys, that's another TED Talk. So after a chat about the importance of savings, we opened the account and I continued to use it for almost 25 years. And it turned out to be the basis of a celebration trip I took to Turkey after I took the bar exam. And then it funded my first piece of real furniture, a white sofa that I loved, which turned out not to be such a good investment. But because I knew I had money in the bank, it allowed me to sleep better for a number of years. That discipline to save that I learned from my grandmother taught me that planning ahead was so valuable. And it started my journey that led me to investing. Not only did I want to put money away, but I also wanted that money to work for me. And back then, a savings account was the easiest way to do that, to set money aside and let it grow. But today, investing is so much easier, and there's so many tools out there that allow you to begin to invest with a small amount of money. So for a second, I want you to ponder your dreams. So in the South, we don't like to talk about money. But money is critical to accomplishing many dreams. And even more taboo for a girl to discuss, my grandmother taught me that money is critical for independence. Being able to take care of yourself regardless what comes your way. And I want you to be independent. And I want you to realize your dreams. And in order to do that, today, I want you to venture to invest like girls. So for all you men in the audience, bear with me and hear me out. In a quick visual, when you jump off to chase your dreams, do you want to have a small backstop? Or do you want to have a big backstop? And the truth is, if you've got a big backstop and it gives you a better chance of success, does it really matter who came up with the idea? No. So studies have shown that you can improve investment returns significantly by applying four factors that are traditionally associated with women investors. Plan with a purpose, take less risk, practice patience and discipline, and seek guidance. So let's break those criteria down and discuss each one. Number one, Planning with a purpose. What moves you? Is it a fancy trip? Is it a place at the beach? Is it starting your own business? Focus on what it is that you want to accomplish. And think big. This is your life. You get to create it. Purpose is not simply wanting to outperform your buddy's account either. Defining what you want not only helps you make the decision to save, but it makes it less likely to blow what you've saved when you run across the next shiny object that calls your name. So in my world, as you can see, that's fresh flowers and a new pair of shoes. But for other people, that purchase might be the latest iPhone or Starbucks every day, or a weekly massage. 
So that takes us to the second rule. Take less risk. In very simple terms of risk, there are three basic asset classes. Stocks, bonds, and cash. Stocks are considered the most risky and their ownership interest in a company. Bonds are less risky and they're essentially a promise to pay you a debt back with interest. Kind of like an IOU from a corporation or, or a government. And good old cash ought to be self-explanatory to the crowd, but provides the least amount of risk. Imagine this in simple terms. You get a call from your best friend who has a repair emergency at her house, and you have to choose what tools to take to repay her. My very independent grandmother was also pretty handy and that rubbed off. So if we choose the least risky route with the greatest chance of success, or the cash in our example, we're going to back our car up to the garage, load up our biggest toolbox, and take it with us. But if we decide to take some risk, like our bonds, we're just going to choose our three favorite tools, our hammer, our wrench, and our screwdriver. But if we go with the most risky alternative that we can solve the problem, <laughs> we're just going to grab a roll of duct tape and a Swiss Army knife and hope for the best. So we know that diversity reduces risk and increases the likelihood of success, period. So adding exposure to cash and to bonds in your portfolio is going to reduce loss in any downturn. So think of this as don't put all your eggs in one basket, and more importantly, make sure you've got a wide variety of tools in your toolbox. So number three, practice patience and discipline. A recent UC Berkeley study tells us that men trade 45% more annually than women, and it results in portfolios that yield almost 94 basis points less. So translation for you, more trades are more expensive, and your returns are going to decline. So don't, don't try to time the market, and don't make quick decisions. Over time in this game, the turtle always wins the race. And there's a cost applied to every trade you make. If you've applied rules one and two, there's a reason every holding in your portfolio was chosen. So trust the plan. Take a deep breath and only make deliberate changes if necessary. So this is kind of like hair color with a trusted stylist. You're pretty sure you want to be a blonde and your super talented lady makes that happen. But your first response when you look in the mirror is shock at the change and you want to make a quick reverse. But if you make that quick decision and you don't analyze the situation, you may not realize you're a whole lot prettier as a blonde. And number two, it's going to be terrible for your hair. To reverse course at this stage, you're likely to wind up with a lot less hair. Fourth rule, seek guidance. Learn more about how our markets operate and function. If economic theory isn't your thing, then seek guidance from qualified people. Vanguard has produced a series of studies that show that participants in professionally managed portfolios have stronger returns. Consider collaborating and asking for help. It's like using a map when your GPS is out of whack or out of range. There probably are folks in this audience that would never in a million years ask for directions on a road trip. But if you're too proud to ask for directions or look at a map, it's likely you could wind up in Virginia when you were headed to Texas. Trusted resources are out there to help you. Don't be too arrogant to use them. So for all my attempts, my feeble attempts at humor today, please don't lose sight of the fact that investing in your future is a very serious topic. Stand up for yourself and stand up for your dreams. Make a plan to save and invest. And when you do, 
I want you to consider playing with a purpose, take less risk, practice patience and discipline, and seek guidance. Today is the day. You can change your life. You can change the trajectory of where you're going. You know, venture to learn more. Venture to save. Venture to invest. And come join me in the movement. Invest like a girl. Thank <laughs> you.